it feels like a, a dormancy which in a way is good because in that sense it means it's not dead it's lying low for a while Creative ebb feels like I'm drowning. Or maybe more like I can only hear my own thoughts and ideas in that muffled way we hear things when we're underwater. It's kind of just, just immediate. Um, I usually come up for air kind of dehydrated and um, it's a horrible place because that's where self-doubt and imposter syndrome creep in and once they arrive it seems even harder to pull myself out of the slump I'm in when the creative tide starts going out um, it's like as if the lights all go out suddenly and the landscape and everything around me is flat suddenly. Um, There's a silence that happens. That isn't the good silence of the creative place. Um, Dana Goya said that um, poetry is the use of language raised to the level of song, and I believe very strongly in the musical element of poetry. Um, the necessity of there being a, a, a music in what you write. And when it's not going well, when the tide is out, that um, that music just stops. And it's not a, it's not a happy place to be. Creative ebb feels like the opposite of creative flow. That I don't know what exactly I should be spending my time on. Whatever it is, not this. Whatever I'm doing at that moment, that's not writing. There's an uncertainty about where to point my energy, my focus. And there's a lethargy to it. Where it's hard to build up any kind of momentum. It's absolutely terrifying. You're, you're petrified that that the words or the stories or the things that you create won't ever come your way again and, and maybe you're actually an imposter. This happens to me maybe a few times a year and when I'm in it I feel incredibly overwhelmed. It affects my mood and the amount of energy and attention I can give to other things in my life. But great ebb feels like that to me. It feels like a big full stop, a big block, block, block. Uh, I don't like it. It gives rise to a feeling of panic. Maybe it's that whatever I put into it, I've used up. And now it needs to be replenished or refueled. Before, I would have thought that my creativity was lost and I have felt in the past and I'm sure could feel again very fearful, which is difficult to get over. Oh, I've got to hit this word count. I've got to finish this chapter today. You're not good enough. Your work isn't good enough. The first draft has to be ready by Christmas. This is crap. And that kind of, those thoughts take over um, everything. 
everything that happens is interpreted in that way. You also feel like what you've been doing has been a waste of time. Writers have a well-known tendency towards being neurotic and we can shut ourselves down. I've always felt that there should be writing psychologists in the same way that there are sports psychologists. It can be really tricky to get over the psychological hurdles that can affect our writing practice. If it's not going well, it can be agonising. It takes a lot to manage those thoughts. I do so anyway by um, uh, just trying to focus on process, you know, that... It's part of the process. It's a natural part of it. It's an inevitable part of it, and I think you can't really beat yourself up about it. If you write consistently, you will have periods, you know, recurrent periods of, of being stuck. It may not last very long, but um, it does happen, and it's, it's, you have to kind of, you know, resist it, push against it a little bit, keep turning up and keep trying to write, but also know when to maybe, when to maybe like leave something for a day or two, you know, and again, just trust your your unconscious that it it'll, it'll it'll come up with any solutions if you're if you're, if you're kind of stuck, you don't know where a story has to go next or whatever. And um, so I've learned to be patient a bit with that and kind of just trust my mind. I'll either be buzzing or completely exhausted. Then, if it's the end of a big project, I can feel pretty restless, like I want to jump onto something new, but that's rarely a good idea. So I try to relax a little spend time with family, refuel. Um, the feeling is if I have to hold my breath under water and just wait. And as I'm using the words ebb and flow now in the same sentence, in relation to the creative process, of course there has to be ebb and flow. It's natural that that would happen. And there has to be an ebb in order for there to be a flow. But ebb time is not one that I enjoy. Um, I just try to enjoy it, enjoy that time. It's all, it's all part of it. The ebb for me is a time to relax into whatever it is I'm doing. The ebb carries the momentum of what is generated in the flow, but at a gentler pace. There's always a still turning point in the tide cycle, a rest period, the passing of the baton, a giving and receiving. So it's a bit like waking up after a night of vivid dreams and coming back into the, the physical world again. And I usually feel tired, but elated and sated. And the best way I can describe it is, it's a bit like the feeling one gets after an orgasm. That sense of release after bringing forth whatever is within me. And my body and my mind are filled with those after-sex feel-good hormones that just make everything in the world perfect for a few moments at least. <laughs> that's when you sometimes you have some, sometimes actually it's not actually the barren desert that you it's not actually the barren desert that you that you that you might think it is it's actually uh, too many ideas and too many options and you're not able to shape them or put structure on them or as has happened to me I suppose recently you're not able to you're not able to dig the idea or, or dig the book or the story out of a heap of ideas and out of a heap of impressions and uh, narrative fragments. And that can be, that's as much an ebb uh, as anything else. I've, I've scarcely been at a loss for ideas. It's just being able to put the ideas uh, into a coherent narrative form. That's what uh, creative ebb can feel like. Sometimes I actually take time off 
I mean, not actually like a weekend or a week if I'm away. And funnily enough, this head decision to actually not write or not work is the very time that sometimes a poem might just happen. You know, when I'm when I'm actually relaxed. I was caravanning during the summer, sitting in a field in the middle of nowhere, really. And I just knew I had to write, even though I was officially taking time out and time away. So creative ebb, although it's a full stop, it can turn into a comma, if I'm lucky. I tend not to force it because sometimes you can try to be too deliberate about poetry and there's something willed about the poem and it tends not to work for me. There shouldn't be really anxieties about periods when you're not writing. Uh, I think of the poems as, you know, the print on the page, but around them you've got a lot of white space and that's white space for me represents the silence 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 that is there when you're not actually um working on poetry or feeling part of that creative impulse and maybe as much as writing poetry i think that Poets can also listen to a kind of silence uh, because there is a lot of noise in the uh, uh, creative process. And I think unless we're attuned to our own silence, uh, then the poems, when they do come, um, maybe don't spring from the same piece. So I'd like to give a kind of uh, space to silence, 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 silence. And, and periods when you're not actually inclined, inclined or stirred to, to, to write anything. I generally don't have that problem. I always feel that it's always there and it's just waiting for me. It may not always be responsive, but if you look and listen hard enough beneath the surface, you always find it. You instinctively know where it is. Creative ebb could be a little bit like what they call writer's block. But I don't experience that very much. Yeah, I tend to take notes a lot and do keep at things a bit. And eventually you get into a a kind of role or creative flow, whatever you want to call it. But I, I, the ebb, I, I, it doesn't really interest me that much. I have, I, I get on with things and I don't take much notice of times when I don't feel like doing stuff. It's like anything, I suppose. You feel like it sometimes, other times you don't. You feel like something else. As regards the ebb, I think that happens when I finish something and I don't seem to know where to go after that. I think the only way to deal with the ebb really is to, is to you know, to, to, to be, uh, subject oneself to different art forms and and to be out and about and, and, and kind of trust that it will happen again and something will detonate the creative process and uh, you just have to trust that and it usually happens in due course. <laughs> 